Welcome to a video from the digitallifestyle.com and in this video I'm going to be giving my thoughts on this Dell XPS 15. Now, I did an initial unboxing video of this a while ago and uh, you can find that on our YouTube channel. But what I thought I'd do is have a look at this now, now I've been using it for, and particularly I've been using it for some music production as well, so I thought I'd have a look at that. So, I've been using it for a while, so let me just give you my thoughts on this. First of all, it's a great form factor. This 15 inch screen is really nice as you can see. Really bright, sharp colours, great high res screen. This is running at 3840 by 2160 which is 4K Ultra HD and it's 100% Adobe certified. What that means really is you've got this great screen with plenty of real estate um, for projects like this uh, music production, this is Cubase Elements and you've got a lot of going on on the screen at once and you've got plenty of screen resolution. I used to use a large uh, monitor for doing music production because the uh, laptop I was using had too small of a screen but this actually gives you plenty of scope for, for that and so that would be the good thing if you're using it for documents or video editing or podcast editing is another thing I use this for. You've got a lot you can fit on the screen at once thanks to this big screen. Also I should say as well, it is tiny bezel as well so the great thing about that is you get this nice little neat form factor sort of, it's not a huge big monstrous device um, to give you an example, there's my Surface Pro, which is the 13 inch screen. This is a 15 inch screen and um, it's very thin as well. I'm going to take the lid on that, you can see how thin that is. Incredibly thin. And even on side of me, I've got this all wired up to my mixer and everything, so I can't move it around too much. But you see, it's very thin and it's got a really nice form factor. So check out my unboxing video if you want to look at more of the the actual form factor itself. I don't want to move this around while I've got everything plugged into it. So, when you start using it, you'll notice as well, it's got this nice soft pad on the carbon um, fibre base. So it's nice and soft to use as a wrist rest as well. That's something else I've found using this for a while. Um, and it's got a nice big trackpad on there as well, which supports uh, multi-touch as well uh, for gestures, so for, um, for scrolling and things like that. So very comfortable device to use with the large trackpad. Keys also, as you can see, backlit, very nice as well. Nice travel on the keys. Um, my only criticism really is there's a bit of a new space here. Maybe they could have shifted it over and had a key, numeric keypad maybe, but um, it's not a big issue. But um, yeah, very nice keyboard, very comfortable to use for for long periods of time as well. Also, it's multi-touch as well. Um, so that is great for things like this where uh, I can have a mixer, let's have a look. Uh, so here I've got uh, a track queued up and you can multi track you know, you can, you can real time adjust the, the volume controls on it. So if I start playing the track, So I can, you know, real time start adjusting the the faders on there, like a real, like you know, like a mixing desk without having to, to use some extra controller. So the multi-touch is really good on it. You can only control one slider at a time, but I think that's more of a limitation with this Cubase Elements software it only supports that but I mean, it's great to have real time you can just you know tweak these manual as you're going along through your track and you can record it as automation and everything so I find that really good I really do like that for touch a lot of the time I use the keyboard and mouse with the software but for mixing it I found that really good having the touch screen on there um, physical attributes at all. I've been using this and carrying this around so I've took this to do some uh, podcast editing when I've been out and about and it's light, it weighs what, um, like just around two kilograms, so it's not a heavy device to carry around, and that's really um, for a big screen like a big clear screen, 15 inch screen like that. That's really, really good that it's not too heavy a device, and it's certainly not a clunky device because of the, you know, the slim bezel on it and this tapered feel that it's got down here. So that's a really good point about it as well. There's plenty of connectivity options you'll see in the unboxing. I'm using um, on here for the music, which I've got a, 
an audio interface connected up to here which is a, a, a mixer to plug the synthesizers and guitars into that's using USB 3 I've got HDMI and um, I've got HDMI and I've got a USB 3 port on the side and headphones and on this side I've got another HDMI port and an SD card uh, slot on there but what I actually use this this uh, USB port is to plug into this um, USB hub uh, and in there I've got another MIDI interface I've got the iLock for the music software and uh, that's two, uh, two MIDI interfaces that's one of my synthesizers goes on to that one and this little travel kit comes with it and um, that's got HDMI and VJ on there USB and um, another USB and network so I use a network lead on that it's mainly for the it's got wireless built in obviously but for podcasts I prefer to have it well, for audio streaming and things um, have a, a wired network on there so when it comes to processors this has got a 6th generation quad core i7 processor with an Nvidia GTX 9600 and the 16 gig RAM in this one and a 512 uh, gig solid state drive what that means is it's got plenty of power now I've got this track here uh, which has got some sliced guitar audio some virtual instruments around the the drums it's got some MIDI to control the instruments and it's got some audio in there all the audio tracks are working with delays and reverb and effects and all this adds overhead to your CPU and um, we can take a look at what that means I look at the performance on here so you can see that there's no disk activity the memory 5 gigs being used this is the with the project open and I can let's start this so there we're in the track now with all the effects running the multi track audio inserts virtual instruments and everything and um, yeah, hardly taxing that processor at all. So I can add loads more virtual instruments to this, loads more tracks and effects. And you can imagine the same thing if you were doing um, Adobe Photoshop or video editing or uh, podcast editing, as I use it for. That it doesn't put any load on the device. It's got so much grunt, and especially the SSD drive, I think, really helps as well. You, it it means really that the machine is fast and responsive um, all the time. So you really you're not waiting on things to load all the, and everything like that. I mean, I can, while that's on there, I can open Internet Explorer and you see it just opens straight away and you know, straight to a site and it's really fast. And while that's going on, let's put this project back on. It's not causing any, it's not causing any audio dropouts as I open up these things and, um, you can see just you know it's how fast it is so that's a pretty complex track loading and I can do other stuff on it all at the same time and there's no problems at all and previous laptops I've used for this um, for music software you know you really got to make sure nothing else is running or you get audio glitching on there I don't get this at all uh, on here and that's one thing that really makes it impressive there's no lag at all um, multi multi track projects no problem at all So there's another track to load it, you see how quickly I, you know, I can just load it up. This one's got quite a few virtual instruments on it as well, and yeah, you know, it's not taxing that CPU at all. So it's excellent for that. And then of course I can just go down and fire a mixer up. And I can hands on real time do that so it's been, it's been really good for the music production I've really enjoyed doing that I also do podcasts so on here I have all the recent podcasts on my weekly show the digital lifestyle show I've edited and produced on here and, and did the real time recording and I used to have a dedicated machine for this but now I can use this and um, I record the Skype call I can use the browser for show notes and everything else so it's been really good for that it's really made the workflow much faster because Everything just loads instantly, and it's it's much quick, quicker for that. 
In terms of battery life, I found, and a lot of times I've been using it in here, doing the music recording on the power supply, but I, I found that I've been getting about six hours, something like that, when I'm doing the editing, maybe eight hours if I do light stuff, a bit of um, uh, browsing, that kind of thing. So, um, battery life, yeah, six to eight hours, something like that. Probably um, my Surface Pro 3 gets slightly more than that, but not a huge amount, but that's only going to an i5 processor and this has got the i7 in here and uh, you know I've got the audio interfaces plugged in as well so that's uh, taking the battery as I'm using the, the USB connections on there. In terms of price it is around 800 quid, 1800 pounds. Um, one slight niggle I did think though is it comes with Windows uh, home, Windows 10 Home and not Windows 10 Professional. Now in my scenario here that's fine but if I wanted to use this in a business you need the professional so you can join the domain and it doesn't include that which is a shame I would have preferred, you know, preferred the professional uh, for the price difference. When you're playing that much for a, a device then you really want to get the professional but uh, I think you can probably pick that version uh, for a small amount extra anyway when you order the device from Dell. Um, so I've been comparing this using it with my Surface Pro 3 and it's just miles faster um, and a much better screen on it. I have also uh, recently compared it with the Surface Book as well. I've been playing with the Surface Book, the Microsoft's new Surface Book. And this is considerably cheaper, about 300 quid cheaper. Similar specs, the dis dis display and the processor. But I also found that uh, I actually like this traditional notebook style you don't need to detach the screen I don't really have any occasion to do that I do use the Surface Pro 3 as a tablet when uh, I'm sort of on the sofa this I tend to do sort of a work on and it's and it's great for that a real workhorse for that it's very premium feel to it just like uh, like a MacBook Pro or a, or a Surface Book I have to say I've not had any issues with drivers or anything like that so it compares very well with uh, the Surface Book um, it's a great package for from, to get if you've got work to be done you need a high-end machine with a good screen this is definitely worth looking at so more information on the digitallifestyle.com i'll do a post to go with this and you can see an unboxing on the digitallifestyle.com and um, i'll post some of the the links to this more information about it as well so thanks for watching this video and i'll see you more on the digitallifestyle.com and on our youtube channel